Hello and welcome back to Danger Aware Animation Department. And just to be sure, I'm not an expert on animation. Not in the least bit. Don't want to come across as that. I'm learning this stuff as I'm going along. And I had not in planned to do a, another video on SimRail here. I had thought that, okay, this is good enough. This is gives me eight octillion different characters to use so why do I need to go further well then I started making videos with it not not real videos I was doing some like shorts and they're all the same color and while I can go into and change the style on individual uh, characters if I import them if I'm using duplicates of the same character changing the color on one changes the color on all of them I've covered this in a prior video so what I want to do is take this character to the next level now I didn't just think of this overnight and decide I'm gonna do this I've been thinking about this for a few days and working out the details. So, first thing I'm gonna do is move this bone that's uh, sex over here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it to be the same direction as the others. And then uh, I want it, whoops, space the same. I'm grabbing it too low. Um, I want it spaced the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my enable grid and that lets me place my bones in a grid just like the others here. So I'm just going to do it like the others. One uh, dropping down three blocks from the bone above. Then using shift lets me get it perfectly straight. So now I've worked this out over the last few days. And what I came up with is that I'm going to add five more digital DNA bones. So we currently have 13, it's going to bring us up to 18. I haven't actually calculated this out yet, but let's see here. Uh, 140 uh, raised to the power, let's see, I need my scientific uh, calculator here. It's, it's not, my phone isn't rotating on me for some reason, hold on. Well, I can't seem to do it. Let's let's do it on the computer. I'm sure we've got the calculator here. So we want to go. We have 141 actual positions for each of these levers, and so we're going to raise that to the power of 18. And that will result in 4.8. Oh my goodness, that's to 38 positions. Um, 4.8 quintillion? Oh my goodness. Um, hmm, that's a big number. Anyway, I'll uh, figure that out later and I'll. See if I can find it online what size that number actually is but that's what I'm going to do I'm going to change the structure of this character so that we'll be able to produce so many variations that it will be ridiculous literally it, it'd be it's it, it, it's literal digital DNA at this point so what we want to do is grab this main control bone here and add and we're just going to add those five more bones so we have one and two that's a little too high let's go control z and then a to add and here's number two
and I think I mentioned in my last video that they alternate these colors like if you come in here under thumb like forefinger and we added a new vector and we color this one blue that blue is going to be a different hue than the one above it you can see it's slightly different I don't know it it seemed to be more pronounced when it was in uh, version uh, 13.5 maybe that's just my memory so anyway the colors don't seem to be as pronounced the difference here so these bones are going to be the same colors as the ones earlier in the, the listing so we were at cadet blue here so when we select this bone it's going to be coral and then this one will be green this one will be orange, this one will be pink, and finally we have the last one will be purple. And there we go. So now those bones are colored, and, and we'll need to name them as well. But before I name them, I want to select them, and I want to reduce their strength. And so we're going to go to bone layer here and select strain and we're just going to reduce those all to zero and we may as well select the constraints because I can see that it's on this one but not these so we're going to go ahead and go to bone constraints and we just click this off and back on and now all of them because they're all selected have those same constraints so there we've got that done and final thing is we need to make sure that these are parented so hitting P we're going to parent to the main control bone over here with everything else all right so now we've got all those bones created that we're going to need we're going to need to add to here and I think I'll just copy those as I do each bone and I'll capture it at that time and so now we need to turn our grid off because it's not helping at this point. It's just getting in the way. And think, thinking of things that are getting in the way, I'm going to hide any bones that are being controlled. So that's the wing bones in this case. So the first bone we're going to change is going to be... Um, well, what are we going to do with these bones? What are we going to change? We're going to change the colors of the character. So one of the great things about Moho is that they have styles. And you can go in and use advanced and create specialized styles and use those styles. And that means that you can reuse that color in multiple places on the character and if you wanted to change it you just come up here and change that color so we can do that right now we can change the face color of this character so now we've got another eight octillion characters well if we change the body as well then that takes it to another degree then we can change the color around the eyes and the curl around the torso and the legs and the arms so that's a lot to go and change each of those. We would have digital DNA that would give us so many billions and octillions and decatillions of characters that we would never be able to even examine them if we put them on a continuous loop. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change the character drastically. So I've just undid my face change. I've got these bones and we're going to save the character as a new character. So remember we were working on version 22, we're now going to 23. So save as and we're going to go to 23 here. And next time I get in here I'm going to clean up all this so we don't have all this showing. And then we save that. So this bone is going to be changing um, the face, the eyelids, and the lips. So we're going to just call this uh, face, 
color. So it's basically all in the face. Then the next one we're going to do is going to be the body colors. And even though there's multiple body colors, they can all be changed by the one bone. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do body colors. Then after that, we're going to do leg colors. So that's going to be feet, shins, and thighs. Then we've got the wing and the sclera together. Not all ants have wings, but all ants have scleras. So I'm going to put the sclera change here and the wings will change with the sclera. So the, there won't be a lot of change in the wings to begin with, but there will be some color change in the wings. So uh, we'll call this uh, sclera because that's the one it will always work on. And then wings, color. And then finally, we're going to have the antenna as well as the pupils. So as the antenna color changes, uh, the, or as the pupil color changes, uh, the antenna will change as well. So we'll go pupil, antenna, color. So there are our bones are named, and we know what we're going to be doing with them, and now it's just a matter of filling out the details. So I've spent the last couple of days working this out, and so I don't have just the current colors of the character recorded, but I need those colors to come back to this for the center point. Now if you've watched my videos, you understand that as we do these actions, we have 141 positions that we can render the character. So when we jump into the timeline here, I can adjust this to 141 different head sizes. Okay? And that also affects where the eyes are. And we can redo that however you want. You can do your eyes the other any way you want. But the point is, this changes the head size to 141 different possible positions. Why is it 141? Because our bone constraints are set for minus 70 and 70. So right here, our angle constraints are minus 70 through 70. That is a range of 141 when you count zero. When you return to zero for these bones that I call levers, because I'm levering them to make effects, when you change these positions, they can be in any number of positions you want. We can go on the timeline here and put a thousand different uh, positions. And then this lever could be moved, theoretically, to a thousand different positions. But the reality is we're limited by the number of pixels on the screen that we can actually position the tip of our, of our uh, pointer to. And I have found that using Moho's angles at minus 70 and 70, it gives us 141 positions at 141 angles, and we can select each of those 141. Going beyond that will work. But I like to keep the numbers the same as the angle, and that helps me down here with my identities. Which, if you watch my last video, you'll know what that's about. So, here we are. We're ready to start doing the colors. But, I've already applied all these colors by using all of these special styles. So, Everything that's a style that I need to adjust manually, I need to take it off the style because the style is applied to the object itself, which means that when I go to the hands, I've got to go into each finger and recolor it to what I'm going to do now. And we, to do that, we need to remove the style. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and look at what am I changing right now? I'm changing the mouth, the face, and the eyelid. 
So I'm going to start by deleting the mouth because that's the first one. So here we are. That's a style. I've already got these numbers recorded. So if you go in here, you can see this is 920909. So I've got that recorded here under mouth on a, on a notepad here. And I didn't do it digitally because I was working it out mentally and on paper before I figured it all out. So we're going to just delete this style. What that does is it renders our mouth to having no actual colors other than black and white. So that's affecting the actual lips of the mouth. So if we go into the head here and we go to the mouth, we can see that the lips is what was actually affected. So we're now going to go in and create an action that is going to affect the lips instead of a style. Okay, so we're going to start at the bone layer. We're going to select the bone for face color and we're going to create a new action. And it's called face color as it should be. First thing we do is rotate it all the way to position one because that's where it's at when we start. And we want to set our maximum boundary. So we're going to jump to 141. And then we're going to rotate all the way to the right. So that's our minimum to maximum boundary. That gives us 141 positions here to put output there. So at our 71 position, where we would normally have a reset, there is no reset for color. Okay, for styles. So whether we're using the built-in styles, the, the swatches of colors, and there are many different swatches that you can choose from, and you can create your own, or you can create new colors here by changing the values. We're gonna move all the way to 71, which is our center, and that's where we want it to be, the color it currently is. And what color is that? Well, that's that 920909. So we're simply going to go into here. And you can see that it's got the value already highlighted. So all we've got to do is punch in the new value, 920909, and enter. And so now that is the color of the fill that we are going to use for the map. We haven't used it yet. We're going to get that. So then we look at the stroke, and what's the stroke supposed to be? Well, right now we see it's 12 pixels, that's fine. And then we're gonna click on the color. And the color we want this to be is 7600000. And there we go, we've got the outline color for our lips. So now we need to select the actual lips in our list. So here's the lips. So now we're going to select the object that is the lips. And now we're going to change those colors. So we're going to select this here. And now we need to put in that 920909. And there we go. And you can see the back end, the back of the mouth change. And then we're going to do the stroke. And that is 760000. So now our mouth is back, if we get off of it, is now back to the colors it was before we started at our reset point. Now we're gonna go all the way to one. And so what colors do we want this? Well, I've worked it out already. So we're gonna go back to the lips so that we've got them selected. And so now that we have that object S1, selected we can change the colors so we're going to go here with 925151 and that's a lighter color red and then on the stroke we're going to go with 763B3B and 
there's our lip stroke color at the minimal position or our lightest color. Then we're going to jump to 141 and I've got those numbers as well. So for our fill, it is going to be, let's see, 330909. Can we tell it okay? And then for the stroke, that's going to be 3A0000. Oh, that's not right. Oh, one more zero. <laughs> there we go. So now we've got our lips color changing on our face bone. If we go all the way back now to the bone layer, we go back to our actions and go out to the main line. And I think I'm making a lot more actions than Mumbo ever planned on even doing. So if this crashes your computer, it's my fault. So we're back at the main line now. And you can see we're in the construction layer and our lips are black and white. What's going on? Well, resetting is not an option on colors. And therefore, none of the colors show up in the construction layer. We actually have to go into the animation frame. And then you can see we've got our color. And now we can move and change the color of the lips to very light colored, to very dark colored, but it's still a red ant. The colors are in the range of the red lips I had. They're kind of black there looking, but it's actually a very dark red. So, and as we move further, you can see it turning more and more red there. So there we've got our back of the mouth and the lips are different colors. And until we get about there, really tell the difference. This gets hard to tell for me. Um, but as we zoom in, you can see there is a difference. Maybe the mouth background's too dark. Let's see here. Let's go back to the fill. Like I said, I'm learning this stuff, guys. So if I make mistakes, uh, learn from them so you don't have to make them. So here we go, we're going to go back to the styles, and we're going to select the mouth, we have to go to the mouth. Choose the lips, we've got that now. So our fill is too dark, so let's go in, and that's zero, that's 3309, let's try 3109, let's see what that does, now that goes darker. So let's go 35. Oops. 350909. Let's try that. And I can see here it's still darker than my stroke at this point. And we don't want that. We want it to be lighter. So let's just do it manually. How's that? Still doesn't look like that to me. So this one. So I'll write that number down instead of the number I had. And now when we look at the mouth, that is better. That that you can see the difference between the mouth and the lips. The tongue we're not gonna worry about. The teeth we're not gonna worry about. Those are just gonna stay the same no matter what. So there we've got the mouth color changing. So the next part we're going to change is going to be the face. So the face colors, what we do is we go into the face here and we're going to grab the skull and we're going to select that object. So now we've got it for setting or changing colors. Oh, we didn't delete the style. So I'm going to pull up that style and delete it. So now our face is white, and that's the only thing that turned white, which is good, because that means it's the only thing we colored with that color. So now we're gonna go back into our action, and we're there, 
and we want to be on the skull and we want to select the skull and now we're going to go into our styles and we're going to select where are we at we're at the maximum and it doesn't matter where we start because there is no reset i'm just going to go ahead and start now with the uh, high end for the fill so the number i've got for the high end fill is f E 8383. All right, and we just tell it okay. And then for the stroke at this point, I've got A8 6D6D. And there's that color. So there's our Oh wait, that's the middle of the wrong colors. Those are the light colors. So let's copy those or just move those. Those should be all the way at the other end. So now we'll change the colors to what they should be for here. So the dark color would be um, 8318818. And then no, that's the middle. That's the middle. The dark color should be. No, that is. That 83188. Yeah. 831818. That's correct. Then we want over here for this, we want 4A16. Whoops. 16. All right. So that's our dark face. And then we're gonna to go to the light face here, yes. And then at 71, we're gonna go back to our static face color, which is on the fill, FE1818. And then on the stroke, A8 1616. There we go. So now we've got face and lips changing. So if we go back to the action, all the way to the beginning, the main line. And we select the root character so we see everything. And then we can go into the timeline, which we are. And we can grab this and change the color of the face and the lips together. So as the face gets darker, the lips get darker in association with it. But they remain separate items. So there's our range of red ants from the lightest face to the darkest face. But those eyelids need to change as well. So we're gonna go in and change those. So we're done with the face. Now we're gonna move to eyelids. So we exit back to the construction layer. We should clear our animation, it's a good practice. And then go into our action again, which is the very last action. And now we're going to change eyelid color. So we go in and we select the eyelids. So we've got two lids on each eye, so upper lid and lower lid. And we're at the minimal position for eyelid, which means our lightest color. And that shows me all the parts I need to take care of, too. So now let's try it. And there we go. So you cannot change the style 
applied to an object if it's got a custom style applied to it. You cannot then apply uh, manual styles, it's called. So here we are, we're going to apply the manual style of the lightest color, E1, 8181. Like I said, I've spent the last couple of days picking these colors out to make sure I've got them. So, uh, bear with me. <laughs> so now the lower lid, we need to do the same colors. So we're going to choose the fill color. And again, that's our lightest fill color of E1-8181. And then the stroke is AA7272. And then we go to the other eye, upper lid, select it, same colors. Bottom lid, you gotta choose that over here. And as you can see, this is just simply a lot of work. You just got to go through the actual work. That's all there is to it. So now we go to the 71 position. We've got to go through all four of the parts. So for the fill, we're going to go with E10909. And I'm just going to copy that real quick. And then move to each part and paste. stroke and we're going to change that to AA0606 that's our base original color that we had for the character so oh so I want to select that and copy it control C and then we're just going to jump to each part grab the stroke selected there we go and lower lid and paste so there now our outlines are going with our internal color so now we go to 141 not 142 and then we go with our darkest colors for each you know, for each color so here we're going to go with uh, 620909 and then we're going to copy that and then we're going to go to each part click on the fill and paste then we're 
we're going to go to the stroke. And for the dark stroke, we want four, five, zero, six, zero, six. And there we go. We're going to copy that. And tell it OK. And then reverse our path and choose the stroke. And change it. So when you use copy paste, it makes things go a lot quicker. And if you're not narrating, it goes much quicker as well. So just know that I am uh, restricting my work by talking with you guys. So as you can see, there we got the colors are changing. And I think maybe the eyes could change a little bit more. I like that they're much different down here. That's the point. Uh, let's change the face though. Let's let's make the face just a little bit lighter. So we're gonna go to the skull and grab it. And in our light, we're just gonna change the fill. Let's go F F B O B O. So let's see how that looks. So like I said, I worked these colors out, I didn't test them. So now if we go out, we are we should be done with this bone. So this this digital DNA should be finished. We're gonna go to actions, we're gonna exit to the main line. That makes sure we're not making any changes to that action anymore. We want to be in the bone layer, which we are. Then we want to go to the animation frame one, and then we want to choose the bone control, and we're just going to check our face color here. So there we go. We can make very slight changes between one and the next character, and I like how the eyes are distinctly different than the rest of the face. Uh, not so much at the original colors I had. They are different, but it starts to really stand out now, both at the lightest end and the darkest end. So there we go. We've got our character's facial colors on a control bone, giving us digital DNA for color. So it's no longer in a style, and we're going to save our character because we don't want to lose our work and forget we did something and erase it all all those terrible things that happen when you're trying to work hard. You do a lot of work and then you make a mistake. And you just threw everything away. So save often <laughs> and change your names often too so that you can advance to another degree of backup. So now we're going to do the next one, which is our body colors. And for body colors, we have two body styles, body one and body two. So the first thing we're going to do is delete those styles. We, we can't use them. They're going to interfere with us trying to color those parts. And by removing them, we can see everything that goes to that color. So we'll do them one at a time so we don't mix up what gets colored what. So we're just going to delete. Let's go delete body one first. So body right there. So we're going to delete that color. And there we go. We can see everything that has that particular color. We're going to create the action that's going to let us color those body colors. So we select this button and we create an action that is called body colors. First thing we do is rotate the bone all the way to the minimal position. Then jump to the maximum position and rotate it all the way to the maximum lever position for the bone. I call them levers, they're bone. But in this case, because they have a maximum minimum, I'm thinking of them as levers. Same as over here. I think of these as levers, but I know these are all bones. So I'll call these bones, but I'll generally call these levers. We want to select each part that has that color before 
And I think there's also some more in the abdomen. If we jump to the abdomen, and rotate that the front level. Yeah, you can see we need to make sure we get each of those different parts colored as well. So for now, I'm going to leave that bone moved over, that lever moved over. We need to remove that before we're done with our action because we don't want that lever moved within our action. But for now, we're going to have it on so that we can see all of these different parts that have to get colored for the color one. So, our body color one, let's start, let's see, we can start at the top here, we go down, and we've got left arm, and let's go to forearm, there we go, and you know what, I just realized, I forgot, there is a, the hand color which is because I imported the hands from another character. And so I'm going to remove that color as well. Because we need to color the hands the same as the arms and the torso. So the style for hands also needs to be deleted. And there we go. And now you can see those strokes are way too thick. So we need to fix that. So Let's go in and do that on each of these hands first. So, in the construction layer, we need to select each part. So here's the palm. We hit G to grab, because there is the palm button. So we got that, and now we're gonna just change the stroke, and we're gonna take it to nine. And that did not do what I thought it would. Oh, we've got to select it this way. And I hope I've got that palm. So now we can change this to nine. There we go. So we're going to do that with each part here. So we've got to select the uh, finger and it's going to select the right one, even though we can't see it. And let's go to. The legs, I think they're fine, thicker. The character's strong, and so his legs need to be thick and strong. No matter whether he's old, uh, any character in, in the ants, they're all gonna be strong-legged. So we'll leave it just like that. So now that we've got the size correct for the parts, and I think the rest of the character is fine with its sizes, we don't need to change any of those. We're gonna go back into our actions and we're going to create, go into the action for body colors. And we want to see all actions. There we go. Now we can see it. So we go to the body color one. This is going to be long. If you, uh, if you, yeah, I'm going to probably speed this part up because it's going to be such a long process. So we're going to start heading down here. Let's turn those thumbs back on. And let's see here. Yeah, we're going to start with this thumb right here. We've got to select it. And we're going to change its style by direct by changing the actual colors. So for the fill color at this position, we want DV8484. Alright, so I'm going to 
copy that because I'm going to paste that a whole bunch of times. So now we got to go OK and then grab the tip of the thumb and change it as well. Control V lets us move quickly. So there's our lightest body colors for both body one and body two colors. So we're going to go back to our main character. We're going to go back to the actions. Exit that action. Oh, before we do, we want to correct this color here. You see, it's only there once. And as you can see, we're in the animation frame one already, and the bone is rotated to the dark. And now we're going to rotate it to a light. So we can go from the light to normal to the dark character. As well as dark face to light face. Light face, light body, light face, dark body. We can do 
do both in dark uh, dark face light light. So now we're gonna go on and do the other two bows the same way. So the next one is going to be the foot, shin, and side all together. So we're gonna clear animation. Alright, so we're going to be doing size, weight, and feet. So let's get rid of the foot. We're going to do the feet first. So we're going to do the foot as a style. And now we're at the dark end. So let's go to our dark foot. So now we do the shin. So we're at the midpoint for the shin.
stroke paste. Shin stroke paste. Shin stroke paste. And now we go to the dark end.
okay, there's one eye. It's not Okay, now I got the sclera's lightest color. That is 71. The sclera stroke at 71. Should be E1. Bill should be white. Just F, 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 F. To the darkest sclera and the stroke the darkest sclera
Okay, so... Go to the character. Go to animation frame one, and we can change the color of the sclera with the wings. So if there's wings, they will change color with the sclera, but they don't change to the sclera color. They just change in conjunction with the sclera. All right, and then finally, we're gonna go with the pupils and the antenna. So we're gonna create, go clear the animation. pupils are just standard and I'd like to make the pupils a little darker on the outer rim so we're going to go into pupil here and let's make this uh, 25 with the thickness oh I gotta select it so we're going to change that to 25 So, for the pupils, let's go ahead in the dark side. Now, I don't think I finished this because I don't have completed numbers and I crossed them off. So, what I'd like to do for the darkest eyes, let's make them. Let's make the, the internal part should just be dark black or really close to black. So we just make that the same all the way through. 27s across the board. So, and 71, I also want it to be that color. outer ring, so the stroke, um, we're going to be at the reds in the center, because that's what the character was originally. Well, not really. It had red with the orange, but or red with the black rims. We're going to reverse it. So let's go to the blues here. So 
solid wood. How's that? We'll go right there. So, we'll copy that. And close this and go to the other pupil. Select it. Choose the stroke and control V. And the uh, fill that was 27s, right? Let's see. Yeah. So we go back to the other pupil and to its fill. Bill and paste it already, and then 141, and it's still that color. So, okay. so then at 71, we're going to grab the stroke here, and we're going to go to red. So now that takes us from red to purples to blue. Okay, so that means the other direction, when we go to the far right or 141, we're going to want to be in the yellows so that it goes through the greens. Let's see if that's what's happening. Let's go into the oranges. I guess that'll work. We don't get any green in there. Um, I know what. I'll go back to 108. And that's where we'll go with the yellows. And then at 141, we'll go with the green. And we need that same green on the other one. And then we need that same yellow. So now we put that eyes. And now we're going to do the similar thing to the antennas. So on the antenna at 141, that will be the darkest antenna. Let's select that and that. And for the fill, Oh, we need to remove antenna. So we got to delete this first. All right, so for the fill, we want four, four, three, D, zero.
71 point. We want the color to be D0F. changing colors and our eye pupils are changing colors so that is the final DNA digital DNA or any Simrel which gives us so many different possible characters that it's uncountable literally uh, well I'm sure it's countable So now, let's test each of these bones in the animation layers. So we've got face color, body colors, leg colors, wing and sclera, and pupil and antennae. So we can create so many different possible characters now. So let's clear that all out. Let's save the character. Oh, and there was one other thing. Um, when the character gets taller, let's see. Height, yeah. So when we go into the height one, um, the, the legs are disconnecting. So, what I need to do is at the furthest extent of the legs, I need to go in and edit each of them. So the uh, the thin the shin to the thigh, this point right here is where we're getting a problem. So we're going to bring this point down, and then this point up. And I believe that character, oh, I didn't do any of the ID numbers. So, I need to go into face color, and that is going to be the coral. So, why do we have coral here is the third object, which is antenna size. So, we're going to go into the ID here and we're going to take antenna size and we're going to duplicate it and we're going to move it to the very bottom of the list and then make sex go in front of it and then choose antenna size 2 and holding shift drag to the right to where it belongs that's the way we do it and then we change the name to uh, in face color. And then that means that beard size would be our numbers for O. So we duplicate that, bring it down. So 
that becomes O, and O was body color. numbers I'm duplicating here. And that goes down to front body color and becomes P and that's going to be legs. Okay. And then we have Wings and sclera, so we'll go with sclera. So cheek size duplicated. Q. Finally, uh, F is duplicated. And becomes R. Which is antenna and oh, pupils. So we'll go pupils. Finally, a pupil and antenna, and glare. All right, so we're back to a huge set of numbers for our uh, characters. So now we've got to get those numbers changing to match with the actions that we're doing. So we've got face color. So we've got to go into the face color action here.
I believe that we now have our finalized character. So we're going to go to Long Lakes to test the legs function properly. So yeah, we no longer have a super knobby knee. It's a little bit knobby there, but acceptably knobby. to start creating some cartoons with this character. And as you can see, we don't have a whole bunch of bones that we don't want in the way, but we can adjust to create a new character on the fly at any time with so many oct octillions and t so many billions and quadrillions of possible patterns and colors now. There's, uh, this is the ultimate every character ant for our little red ants for the bug villagers that are semblant relatives well you know what they say when you've completed any project it's obsolete because the moment you finish you've already thought of dozens of things to be invented and the one thing I've thought of to make this puppet better is that we use these characters for making uh, comic strips as well, cartoons. And so we do need them to be in black and white. And that means that I need to add one more control. And that is simply to give me black and white on all these functions here. Um, on the target we no longer need, so let's delete that. And what else? Um, I, the highlight is, yeah, that stays, and that won't change even in black and white, so that's no problem. The object in hand, that can be any color anybody wants. I'm just going to change it to black and white. And then if anyone's changing it, they can alter it. So that is safe to change, taking that one out. And what else do we have? gums on the character's mouth and that I don't really need to change it except for black and white or not. Let me think about this. So we got the gums, the tongue, the teeth are just black and white in this gray and white. So that can stay the same. Um, the eyelashes, they do have a color. So we've got three items. The gums, the tongue, and the eyelashes. For them to be black and white only at one point. So the rest of the time they stay the same. minimum position we're gonna drag these just one step up because at one or at the lowest position we're gonna go pure white and black or a gray and white for the character depending on what part we're looking at so 
Here we go with face color. We're going to go back down to skull. At one, skull. I want to take those two colors on the skull and move them to two first before I move it, before I change it. So there's our minimum skull color. Except that now at one, we're going to change it to white. So, selected it. So now we need to do the uh, eyelashes. Let's start with the eyelashes. So the eyelash color, copy that. And then we're going to delete eyelashes. And I'm done. Doesn't that magic just snap my fingers and everything's finished? Wouldn't it be nice? So here we are. We've got our character. We can adjust the character into any character we want. Adjusting the digital DNA chromosomes.
and the rest colors. And just as when we move from here to here, we shouldn't see much change, or here to here, the only change we should see is the fact that we now have color. Okay? So we can come into here, we can create a new character just by adjusting each of these levers here. In a matter of moments, we have a brand new character with whatever traits we need. And we can then go into uh, bones and hide shy bones. And now that character's locked in. But now, here's the beauty that we could not do before. We can now duplicate this character. Takes a moment because there's a lot of work here. So now we've got a second version of this character. So let's pull him to the side so you can see that there's two different characters now. And we can now adjust everything on this character. So we're going to show the height, the shy bones. And now we can make this into another character with completely different colors as well as shape. Just like that. And let's go ahead and make the face a little different. There we go. So we've got two completely different characters and they're both ready to animate. All we gotta do is lock this one in hide shy bones so now this character is locked in and this character is locked in and now we can simply create a new vector well we have to go to the construction layer let's create a new vector this will be our background and let's do this Let's draw a quick background drop, backdrop. Pink instead of blue. So now we've got our background with our two characters. We can go into there and now we can see there's a major difference between the two characters. They've each got their own ID numbers and we can turn that off real easy just by hiding the character ID here. Turn that off. Same here. And voila, we've got two unique characters different colors all the way through different co completely different characters but they're really they're symbol and relatives and there we go i think this is my ultimate puppet character for uh, a specific species now we can create an unlimited number of characters so thanks for watching I'll see you all later, and have a great day. And please visit DangerAware.org to change the paradigm of abuse awareness. If you can, donate funding to us. We would love it if you would help us keep doing what we're doing. If you could donate animation work, we could love that too. Or if you'd like to do voice acting, or create new characters for us, whatever you'd like to do, get a hold of us. We're open to anybody helping in any way they can. So you have a wonderful day and thanks again for watching.
Could be a stranger, could be the one that